This is a Casey Tech School video on how to use Tinkercad circuits to build and code an Arduino circuit to control an output such as an LED's behaviour based on incoming sensor information. In an earlier video, we connected a sensor circuit to an Arduino, which converted light into a changing analog voltage. We then used code to store the incoming value and display it on our screen. All right, so we'll go to Tinkercad now. Um, I'm not going to create a new circuit. I'm going to use a previous one. If you don't have this circuit, you'll need to quickly build it using a photoresistor from the library, also known as a light dependent resistor, a light resistor and a 1K resistor. We now want to connect up an output circuit. So we're going to, we've done this before. We're going to use an LED and a resistor. The anode or positive side will go to the more positive side of the circuit, which is towards D7. And the negative side, the return circuit for the LED, will go to the same electrical connection, which is the zero volts, the negative side of the supply coming from the USB, also known as ground or GND. It's the same return circuit as the light circuit uses here, GND. All right. Just make that fit the screen a bit better. Now we have the our input circuit, light sensor. It's feeding changing analog voltages into A0 as an input. Here we will need to code this LED circuit as an output. So we'll go to the code section. Uh, if you've already built the sensor circuit, you should have some code here still. But we now need to add some LED code. If you are building the circuit from scratch, you'll need to change the default code into this code here and then modify it. So pin mode A0 is an input. We're now using digital pin 7 at, with an LED output, so we need to put that into our setup. It'll just run once, so pin mode, oops, brackets, 7, we don't need to say it's a digital pin, output, close bracket, semicolon. Um, we're going to leave the serial begin in, so we still want to start read this value to make some decisions later on. And just run this. It's not going to power the LED at this point. I'm just going to click on our light sensor, do a little light gauge, which is going to simulate light being shined on the light sensor. I'm just going to open up the serial monitor again to see these values. So when it's fully on, we can see a value of 679. That's full brightness. At the midpoint, half light, we're getting 526. Bring it right down to there being no light or in a state of darkness, we can see the value is 6. And it's this value that we want to use as a threshold point. In a real Arduino circuit, though, it wouldn't be quite as cut off like this. Like if we had a real LDR here, light dependent resistor, and we put our finger over to simulate complete darkness, we might have values that vary between at least 6 and 10 or 12. So we need to keep that in mind. But this being a simulation, it's much more specific. So we're going to use this as our threshold value. All right, so now we'll just close code for a moment. So what we want to do in theory is when this becomes very dark, a value of 6 or below, we want to light the LED. Kind of like it's simulating, a, for example, an automatic street light, gets dark at night, lights turn on. So we need to do this in code. So we'll open the code back up. We now need to go into the loop. At the moment, we've got a variable of memory called light value in RAM that reads in the analog or changing voltage here and then prints it out on our screen down here. So that's good information. We know that and we know that by testing it, that six is complete darkness. We want to code for that. So now we're going to use in programming uh, programming structure called conditionals and that's going to use if. So we're checking to see whether the value read into the variable light value is less than 6 and in this case we're going to use one more less than 7. So if it's less than 7 do this and to do this once we hit the brackets here it indents slightly showing us that we need to put some more curly brackets to encompass some code here. So if less than 6, digital write 
seven pi, meaning we're going to turn an LED on, and then we're going to close that bracket using these curly braces here. Second part of this code, though, if it's not that, what are we going to do? We're going to code in an else. If it's seven and above, we want to make sure the LED is off. Again, it'll indent in, giving us curly brackets or braces to work with. And the opposite is, is to code for digital write low on pin seven. Close curly brackets. So now we have a complete loop function within two outer curly brackets, one here and here. Within that, we have two conditionals or conditional statements. If light value is less than seven, do this. It has to have its own set of curly brackets with the code inside. Then the else statement, if it's not less than seven or seven and above, do this. Let's try that code out. All right, let's click on the sensor. Let's actually move this out of the way slightly so we can see it. Click on the sensor. And if we go to full brightness, the LED is off. And as we adjust the brightness, we can see the numbers over here in the serial monitor decreasing. And when we get down to fully off, let's just say that again, here we're at 323, we're just dropping. When we get to six, the LED comes on, which it does. And we can show you that coming on and off as we adjust brightness. What we might do here, just stop that slightly. Uh, it wasn't very bright, so the default was 1000 ohms or one kilo ohm. A good value in this case would be 330 ohms. It's enough of resistance to protect the LED while making it bright enough when it's turned on. And we can see the LED turning on and off. Points to remember here, we have a lot of sevens written here. We need to understand that these are different. The seven here means the seven as a light value. The seven here in digital write code though is the seven or digital pin seven here. We could prove this if I change that value to 10K, for example, now we're getting a completely different set of values. Here we can see the lowest value is 54. Uh, so we need to make it 55, one more above. So if it's less than 55, meaning 54 and below, do this, start the simulation, click on that. If we go above there now, we can see the serial monitor is showing 921. As we decrease light to darkness, it turns to 54. The LED is turned on. And that's how you code to look at sensor information coming in and then based on a threshold value, code it to turn an output on or off. Now that we've got that circuit working, we could take out the serial commands, serial begin and serial print line as they were really there just to see what the value was and display it on our screen. Now that we know a low value in this case is 54, we can actually take these out. But if we leave them in, that's okay too. Well, the aim of this video was to use incoming sensor information to control the behavior of an output component. More specifically, we use conditional if and else code structures to determine whether the incoming light and analog voltage had dropped below a certain threshold, which in turn triggered turning an LED on. 